How significant is the role of AI in theoretical physics? Oh, wow, these are really good questions. <laughs> have, you have you dabbled with it? No, but I know people who have, and I'm working with, with Adam. Adam Moss does. Adam Moss does it all the time now. We use it when we're doing some of the simulations. Uh, it's becoming more significant. In fact, it's in, in astronomy, I think it's becoming really big. Basically, in any area where there's lots of data that you need to sort of be able to determine the significance of that data, then AI provides you with an, an alt a new route now in which to generate mock data in a, in a way that allows you to then compare the real data to the things you've generated. How significant is the role of AI becoming in the field of theoretical physics? Yeah, this is clearly very. I think that's, that's true. Lots of people are using it to sort of analyze data. That's an, that's an obvious area where people are using it. But actually, I mean, I'm a theorist, and, and, and actually and one of the things I like to do is build models and come up with ideas and models. People are using it in that direction. I think more and more, uh, in a way that kind of frightens me a little bit, because you sort of I feel like we're losing the, 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 the art of, maybe this is just me as an old fart who just sort of wants to do things the old way and is frightened by this new advance. Yeah, I, I think that it's now start, people start to use it to think about how we might build models. One of the things that gets used a, a lot in, uh, more and more, is in trying to study the landscape of string theory. There are now many, many variants of string theory. And so it becomes quite difficult to determine which one, if any, will be our universe. But that some friends and colleagues of mine in Oxford are actively using AI to look at go through a whole class of models to try and predict using AI which of these give closest to the universe that we have in terms of particles, in terms of forces. And that might then guide us as to how we should be thinking about string theory in the future, which direction should we be going. So it's becoming, it's becoming very significant, I think. String theory, we start off with this higher dimensional theory and we, we, we wrap up lots of extra dimensions or six extra dimensions small on a certain type of shape. Uh, and there's lots of different ways you can do that. And people are starting to use AI to explore that, that, that world, if you like, the, the, the world of solutions that you can uh, spit out of string theory. This is something that, that's an active area of research at the moment. But yeah, more and more you're starting to see it, I think. And uh, to the point where I've actually started to wonder, is there a way in which we can use AI to perhaps attack my favorite topic, which is the cosmological constant problem? Is there a way in which we can give you know, certain criteria to, to, some, to, some, um, to some system and say, look, these are the rules of the game, go and search a solution? Uh, I don't know. It, it, ultimately, though, it, it, it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, a growing, it's a growing field, and I think it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of frightening for us, us, us old guys. <laughs> But you're on board, like you're willing to, you're, you are going to learn it. You're going to learn a bit about it. Learn a bit? What do you mean by learn a bit? Learn a bit. So we have, we have people here that, that, that kind of know, know AI. I have been planning to talk to, to in particular Adam, who's here, uh, about this, because I do think it would be really interesting to sort of, the key is to know how to ask the question in the right way, that you can then allow the computer to solve it. And that, that I think, that thinks a challenge that you can still bring as a human to the game. And it's probably actually the hardest part of the challenge at the moment. Once you set the computer rolling and see what it comes up with, then I guess that's that's a different story. But but actually setting up the problem in an interesting way is um, and getting it to ask the right questions and, and in a way that it can be trained. I think I think there is the there is the sort of the human challenge. Uh, yeah, definitely interested in that. Do you like pineapple on pizza? Actually, I've, I, I did, and I'm getting really no. I'll take it off now. I'll take it off the pizza. I went to uh, Bologna. Recently, I was lucky enough, I went off to a summer school, and they don't do pineapple on pizzas in Italy, as far as I can tell. So, no, I've, I'm moving away from it. Really? Interesting. Mm. Okay. I like pineapple. Just not on pizza. Do you like kiwi with the skin on or skin off? No, do you know, I react to kiwi and the hairs on the skin, and that's only in the last few years I've realised that I've... So I've well, like physically, like... Yeah. So I can't breathe. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can, of course, I'm, I'm not. But I find it more difficult. So it's, it, it, something happens at the back of my throat and it kind of contracts. So that's an easy one. No, no skin. skin. No, no skin. skin. No skin. Do you like Canadian bacon or just ham? 
is Canadian bacon what we would call bacon? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I, I think I like both. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know what they mean by Canadian bacon. Yeah. What do you think about pineapple on pizza? It's an absolute abomination and should not be allowed. Disgrace. No. Really? Yeah. Why? Oh, it's abominable. It's just the worst thing in the world. It, honestly, guys, it, it, it's just it should be banned. I hate it. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, like, I like it. You're 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 a disgrace. My wife likes it too, and she's a disgrace. It, it it's just unacceptable. But it's just so bad. No. I don't feel like you're giving me a reason. It, it's but do you, do you cut up pasta as well? No. Are you sure? I feel like you might. Bro. Maybe if it's really long. Yeah, you see, this is just not okay. None of this is okay. It's just terrible. It's sweet and, and it's just like, I, I don't like pineapple anyway, right? I don't like pineapple anyway, but I do like mango. I wouldn't put mango on a pizza. It's just, why would, why would you put something sweet on a pizza? It's just, no, I don't want that. It's just, just not okay. It's the sweetness. It's the, it's the fundamentally unacceptable behavior that should be banned forever. <laughs> Do you have kiwi with the skin on? What, eat the skin? That's weird. No. Why would you do that? You scoop it out, you cut it in half, and you get a little teaspoon and scoop it out. Scoop it out. That's nice. nice. You don't eat the skin. That's weird behaviour. I didn't know that people ate the skin until that question. Yeah, I think it's just the question, to be honest. I think I must be the only person. Canadian bacon or just ham? Don't know what Canadian bacon is. Neither do I. <laughs> right. Is uh, that just, are they saying bacon or ham? Is that what they're saying? I don't know. I mean, I always think when you go to America or, or Canada or you know, North America and you, and you have the bacon there, it's terrible compared to what we have over here. Agree. Uh, so, no. Um, you could ask me whether, as a, I'm half Spanish, do I have, like ham or chorizo, which is nicer. Chorizo wins every time, definitely. I agree. Yeah. Really good uh, chorizo at a tapas place near my place. Yeah. Yeah. Numerical simulations. In both of these situations, one where it's evolving in time and one where it isn't. When you do numerical simulations, you're looking at lots and lots of potential galaxies evolving. You hopefully will see some difference, say for example, in the clustering 